hi folks, this is Darren with Meyer V Works. Today we have something a little different for you than we would normally do. We're not actually going to be fixing a furnace or anything, but while we were working with another customer, uh, we met a Deborah Raiden. And she's an amazing person. She's a single lady who's traveling around the country in her van with solar. So we thought it would be really amazing to just spend some time with Deborah and ask her some questions that maybe you guys might be interested in doing as well. And so we've got us both mic'd up and we're just going to see how this goes. We're just going to have a nice little conversation asking some questions and um, hope you enjoy it. Deborah, yeah. um, introduce yourself to our audience and let us know who you are and where you've come from and then we'll just kind of dive into some questions. Okay, like sounds that. good. Um, I, my, my name is Deborah Raiden, which you told your audience, yeah. and I am 63 years old. I'll be 64 in December. Wow. And I have uh, been living in my van full time for five years now. Amazing. Yeah, so uh, it was 2017, January 1st, that I took off from here, Port Angeles, uh -huh. from my aunt's house, and headed down the road, uh, kind of not having a clue what I was doing. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. What yeah. an inspiration. Yeah, good. Yeah. So five years later, I'm still doing it. I went out kind of with the idea that, you know, if I don't like this, uh, I'm coming back, you know, two weeks, I'll go out. If I don't like this, yeah. if I don't, you know, um, I'll just come back and do something different. But five years later, then I'm still doing it for a multitude of reasons. I, um, and hopefully we'll jump into some of those. Yeah, sure. Why did you choose a van? Why not an RV? Talk about some yeah, of the decisions well, behind I that. I had started looking at a lot of YouTube videos, like so many people are doing Yay, and have done. Cute. And yeah, right. <laughs> and um, kind of wondering about this lifestyle. And so then I started researching the different uh, rigs that people use. And the primary reason that I chose to do a van was um, the simplicity of it. Okay the ease of parking and driving uh, and the safety because okay. <laughs> if I'm towing something as a single female and I feel uncomfortable and I'm sleeping in something that's hooked to my vehicle I have to get out to get into my oh, good driving vehicle to yes. get away and so I just like the idea that if for any reason I'm feeling uncomfortable I just climb out of my bed drive you know jump into yes, the front seat yes. and drive away and, and I so, so it was really that was a huge thing. Um, also, the ease of repairs, and you know, I can drive into any, you know, no matter where I am, there's going to be a Dodge a dealership yes. or something, yes. right? And somebody can fix it. And so, so those were the primary reasons that I decided to do the van, and I could convert it myself. Hey, so did you do all this yourself? I did. Oh boy. Okay. Now I had the help of my son help me with the electrical and solar. Okay. okay. But everything else I predominantly did by myself. Uh, amazing. Thank now, you. Now you had mentioned safety. I know that that's a concern that people have. Um, uh, like if, so, a single female wanting to yeah. do this and, and see the world. Um, I've I've said that I think uh, traveling is in the DNA of, of the American experience. Yes. You know, and. Um, which is exciting, but do you when you stop for fuel, when you have to stop to use the bathroom, do, do you ever feel sa uh, unsafe in situations? And what would you do if someone were to realize that you were alone? H how would you handle something like that? Um, in five years, I have only had one time where I was hesitant to get out of my van at night at a rest stop. Okay. And so I didn't. Okay, you, you just know, stayed in. The advantage <laughs> of having your toiletries and your everything in your van. I just thought, no, I'm not going to use the restroom here because there was a group of uh, young people. It was very late at night. Okay. It just didn't feel right. Okay, okay. Um, and so that was the only time in five years that I have ever thought I'm not comfortable. That's good. Yeah. Y yay for our culture that right. it's not as bad as it right. sounds. Right, and okay, I, I think... Um, you just have to be, uh, you have to listen to yourself, you know, you have to listen to your body and what it tells you, and you have to be intelligent about where you're going to park. Okay. You know, so. Good. Any major breakdowns? Like you mentioned the van, you could go to a shop. Have yeah. you had a t tire blowouts? How do you handle uh, an engine breakdown, a tire blowout? How, how have you handled those types of things? So far, I haven't <clears throat> had any. Now, that's not to say I haven't had repairs, but there haven't been anything that has kept me stranded on a road. Okay. Okay. or anything like that. Um, I did get myself stuck in sand once and oh. I was alone. Okay. There were a lot of other campers and RVs in the area, but I was like, huh, uh -huh. my front wheel was deep in the sand. Okay. I thought, you know, I had a moment of, <laughs> uh <-huh. 
yeah. what am I going to do? <laughs> um, and thinking about going and asking for help. And instead, I stopped and gave it some thought and thought about what do I have and what are some techniques I know? And how can I maybe get myself out of this situation? So I pulled out my plastic risers, that, okay. you know, your balancer. Yes, yes. And dug under that front tire and set it behind it and backed out because I knew behind me was good. Yeah, okay. I had gone into this spot yes. that I didn't know was soft and got myself out. So wow. I was like, yeah, I was feeling really good that day. <laughs> <laughs> 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Right? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Good. Um, now, tell us about your van. Tell us about the solar. Tell us about the process you went through to pick the van. And okay. and and because it's amazing. I, I like the the what, what do you call homey with your, your baskets. Yeah. And, and, and folks, what we'll do is we'll, we'll pan you around and, and kind of show you some of this uh, living space that you've created. Okay. So uh, talk us through how you chose that. So if I'm a new person, and, and okay. this is something that I've, you've inspired me, and this is something I want to do, what are, what are some of the considerations I need to choose? H how would I choose a van? How do I go about deciding what to do? Okay, well, you know, I was pretty ignorant on the subject, and I okay. think... Um, for everybody, it's going to be different. Their their needs, their wants, their um, value systems, and their okay. ideas of what's comfortable and what isn't. Um, because I was not real sure that this was a lifestyle I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted to keep it pretty simple, so that if I chose or decided it was not a good fit for me, that I could easily um, come back and you know get get rid of the van or whatever. Sure. <laughs> Somebody else could use it. Um, mm -hmm. So I just started researching, didn't want to do the sprinters, nothing against them, but much more expensive, okay. much more expensive to repair, um, a little different shape. You know, they're often very tall and they kind of go narrow at the top and things like that, which is good for, I think, maybe people who want storage at the bottom for their bikes and their activities and stuff. Okay. But d decided not to do that. Also had a couple of mechanic friends say, don't do that. Um, that have sprinters and love them, but they're mechanics. Exactly. Yes. And that's okay. what they said to me. <laughs> love my sprinter, but I'm a mechanic. Yes, so okay. I was like, okay, okay. Um, and didn't want to do the diesel, just the cost of diesel was more. And I had, you know, I had a limited budget. And um, did some research on the square footage and things like that of the different, you know, you've got your Ford Transit. Okay. Um, and you've got the pr uh, Ram Promasters, which is what this is. Okay. You've got your Nissans. So there's, you know, there's three or four that are kind of pretty predominant out there. These ProMasters have gotten ridiculously popular. You see them all over the place now, yes, right? Yes. <laughs> so anyway, um, some of the things about this that worked for me was it tends to be lower to the ground than any of the other ones. What you give up in that is that the wheel wells come up higher into this back the, the living space. area. Okay. This one also does not have the step down that goes out that I think the Ford or some of the other ones have a like a step down area. Okay. So this is a flat floor all the way across. Um, and it's supposed to have the most square footage of all of them. Um, I think, you know, that, that's going to vary if you're getting the extended versions and things like that. Okay. It's also supposed to have the straightest walls. Okay. So those were some of the okay, things good, that good. I thought, okay, well, those will work for me. Um, and I knew that I could find a dealer anywhere. And at five years ago when I started out, I was reading different forums and people were talking about, particularly with the sprinters and things, it can be really hard to find an authorized dealer to work on those. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, you know, I, I'm going to need to know that I can pull in anywhere if, it, it, if yeah. I need repairs done. So. So I opted for the Ram ProMaster. Okay, now, yep. at the time when I was looking, I had specific wants. So I wanted the the oldest model I could get, which was the 2014, because mm -hmm. that's when they came into the United States. So I wanted a 2014, I wanted a 2500, and I wanted a high top, and I wanted um, the 159-inch wheelbase. Excellent. Okay. There was only two of them. Oh, my gosh. One in Albuquerque, New Mexico, okay, and one in Everett, which was an hour away from me at the time. I was in Bellingham, Washington. Okay. So uh, I was actually getting ready to fly to Albuquerque because I had talked to the dealer there and everything. Well, I decided at the end, you know, hey, I need to at least go talk to because it was a, it was a private owner mm -hmm. an hour from me, and I just didn't know if he would wiggle on price. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sure, <laughs> sure, that's always important. And, yeah, so I thought it's worth trying. So. I did. I went and saw the van. It was beautiful. It was this one. It had the rack on top. It had a ladder. It had the backup camera. 
and um, and so we came to a price that we were both really happy with, and so I, I got it. Excellent. Yeah. So. And then you and your son, you did a lot of the work on the inside. I did all the interior work. Wow. Yes. Okay. All the cutouts and the notches. And yeah, that's why the they're fun. not all great and okay, perfect. Okay, it's okay. But it's okay. Yeah, because I had watched all these YouTube videos, right? And so I thought, I'm going to do this. Yes, yes. Um, and so then I got it and I thought, uh-oh, uh -huh. what's different about this picture compared to what I've been watching on YouTube, yeah, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, okay, all those YouTube videos, they've got a garage, they've got um, a husband or a dad or a brother, they've got all the tools, they've got, I'm living in a condo, I have no garage, I have, you wow. know, I've sold all the tools I ever used to have when yes. I had 10 acres, so I'm like... Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, how do you do this? Oh, or dying to know. Yeah. Yeah. So I did have a son that lives in Bellingham, um, and he was in the middle of building out a business. Okay. So a building and and doing all of that work. So he had no time for me, but he had some tools. Okay. I always had to scrounge around and find them. Yes. <laughs> and you know, and then you know, I'd have to drive every day to his place mm -hmm. where they were building that out and. It was a real pain in the ass because, um, you know, every time you forgot something or you needed a new screw, you need something, you had to load everything back into the Just van, to drive. drive to Home Depot. Oh, boy. Okay. So it was, you know, what should have taken an hour would take three hours. Sure, sure, sure. That kind of thing. And I tell you, I, I spent some time in the Home Depot parking lot building. Because, oh, fun. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. It'd be like... That's I might need tip. something. I'm just going to stay here because I can do this yes, part here. Yes, yes, yes. And it was fun because you would meet lots of people. People would sure. come by and they go, like, what are you doing? Or, or they go, I'm doing that too. I've got a you know, van at my house. And I'm, you know, so that was fun. You, you got to know some of the people that were um, kind of starting out on their Did journey. Did Home Depot ever come well. out and say, hey, you can't be here? No. Because you were like, buying stuff from them. I cut insulation. Oh I did all kinds of things sitting in the... Oh, that's a great yeah, tip. Yeah. Good, so, good. Yeah, so that's how I kind of got started on this particular uh, choice of vehicle and put it together. How long did that build take? I'm going to say it took about five months. And I was, I was trying to remember the other day if I was still working when I was doing it or not. But I was renting a condo and I had given myself okay. a set amount of time. And um, I remember, you know, so it was, it was like, I think I picked this up in like July. Okay, okay. And started working on it right away because I wanted to be gone by... Uh, I think it was Denver, December 15th Head or south. something. Yeah, yeah I yeah. wanted to be. I had to. I gave notice in oh the my condo. Gosh. So, so you I, created a I deadline I gave myself a deadline. Yeah. Wow. And I remember when, when I had gotten, you know, most all of it done or it was the time to put in the electrical. And that's when my son was helping me. It had gotten cold. And we oh, had no. this van running. It took, like, it was a 12-hour day of doing all the electrical. All the electric. I had cut everything. I had all the lights. I had the wiring up there. But just... You know, hooking up the batteries sure, sure, and sure. doing all that and getting the solar hooked up. And that's, it was just a long, cold day. And we had the engine running to keep warm. Just to keep warm. <laughs> yeah. The dash heat. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. Now, you had mentioned solar. Yes. And I know that that's a, a lot of a question that a lot of people have. Yes. So without getting real technical on this. Yeah, because I couldn't. That's okay. What, um, what's been your experience with solar? What did you um, choose to go with? Um, and how's that working out for you? Like, how's that working out for you? Yeah, like it's, 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 the solar is great. Okay. I ended up getting um, a lot more solar than I need. Okay. I've got, I think, th there's two panels on top, and they're 280 each okay. or something like that, or 320 each. Enough to run a little city, basically. Wow, okay. But I didn't know what I was going to want when I ordered the solar. So, um, you know, I didn't know if I was going to want a microwave. And I didn't, okay. yeah, I just didn't know yet. So go big. So I thought, I'll just get what what can fit up there. Sure. And, um, and we can take the cameras up when we're done and just kind of show you around some of the stuff, you know, that we're talking about now. We'll actually take the cameras up and show you what, what we're talking about. Yeah, so, so okay. there's two up there. I, I have very little draw on them. I have an ARB refrigerator, which you are currently sitting on. I am on. sitting on the refrigerator. And okay. I have um, my electronics, and I can occasionally blow dry my hair. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's fine. I've been, no, no TV? No. No Wi-Fi? No. Uh, okay. No, because Surround I just use... sound? Okay. No. <laughs> You're not camping then. No, no. popcorn? No microwave? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I decided, you know, I don't want that. And I found that the simpler I live, the, the easier... The easier it is. There it is right there, folks. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That's, that's the whole theme of this. It's true. Every time I try to do something bigger or better, yes. I go back and I go, no, 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 this is simple. 
love and that. to sort of um, illustrate that, I met a friend here in, uh, I met a new friend here uh -huh. in Port Angeles, um, and she's, her son is doing her van. She's got a little place here, but she wanted a van to go travel in. And it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be professionally oh, done yes. and all this stuff, right? <laughs> and so she showed me the composting toilet oh, that fun. she had bought. Okay, yes. All right, and how she was going to put it here and put it there. And then she came to see my van, and she saw my bucket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She sent the toilet back. Wow, it's just so simple. So simple. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's way easier than... You don't need the big fancy composting you toilet. You just need a bucket with the you stuff don't. in it. And you're yeah, good to go. that's, the, again... People are different. They have different values. Do you systems, want to elaborate on that a little bit? Because that might stimulate some questions that people might have. Like, wait a minute, I don't have to have a composting toilet. I could use a bucket. <laughs> well, and How comfortable reason, are you talking yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, that's going to be a question. It. People, because I plumbing have, happens, you know, it, it in our does. bodies. Yes. We're, we're humans and we have to do that. And I even had thought about, you know, the composting toilets. Sure. I'd certainly researched them before I went out. Um, and, you know, you have to dump them, you have to clean them, you have to do these things with them. When you use a simple bucket, camping bucket, with yes. a luggable loo toilet lid on sure. top, yes. you know, and um, a pee jar, and then mm. the bags and the kitty litter or the pine pellets or whatever it is you, you choose just... to use, you tie it up and you throw it away and you're done with it. So simple. And, and how is that any different than... Um, the fact that we throw away diapers. Exactly, and yes. And we throw away our dog. Cat litter. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Doggy it's food. all the same. So you come, you know, you have a, a little a garbage can outside of your van when you're parked. Yes. And then when you go into town and you have a thing of, you know, big garbage bag, you throw it in a dumpster. Uh, simple. So. Just like you said. So very simple. simple. Yeah. Um, so you would have solar. Then you have a solar controller. Then you yes. have batteries. Yes. You've got more than you need. Um and uh, so did you go with lithium batteries? Because that's a big topic now. Yeah, or did you go people with are loving it. No, I okay. didn't. And at the time, I didn't really know much about the lithium. So I went with AGM batteries. Okay, okay. The um, first time I went out, I had two 12-volt AGM batteries. Okay. My son and I put in our little battery monitor thing, I see right? It there, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so like I said, he was building out his own thing. His brain was in other places. And we got that set up, we got it plugged in, everything's working. Well, we didn't set that to the type of battery. Ooh, okay. So it was doing a deep cycle on an AGM, on okay. a regular and maintenance, and they don't like that. No. So about, oh, no. I'm going to say, they, they probably lasted a uh, maybe a couple of years. Yes. And then I noticed that they were puffing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, they can't guess off. not right. Yeah. And it didn't seem to be holding quite as well, uh, you know. So when I came back up um, to my home area here, I I switched it out and that, you know, they were not good. They, that had destroyed them. Okay. So I, um, and I think that was 200 amp hours. I now okay. have one 12 volt AGM battery that's 100 amp hours. And that's enough for you. And that is enough to run my refrigerator, my electronics, my, you know, whatever. Wow. And my my battery's never below 80. Wow. Okay. And, and that's because of how much solar there is. Yes. You know, it's like a big sieve just yes. constantly yes. bringing in yes. the energy. If I only had a small amount of solar, that could be an issue. That's a very good so, point. Yeah, it's that sort of... Did you do any math on, uh, because, so if, if and we'll, we'll do solar again, because um, uh, I know that people who want to do solar, they'll, there's a calculator. There's yeah. several websites out there where you could do a calculator, like how long are you going to have this on, how long, right. and they'll, they'll distill the whole thing down to like watts, yes. and then you say, okay, so you need to have this many solar panels, this big of a battery bank. Did you go through that process, or was it more just trial and error? I kind of tried to do that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Mm. I had my little list, you know, so it, it, it of could hair be, dryer. It doesn't have know. to be physics. Um, and okay, this and is it good. was to me, it was like ah, and that's why I said, how big of an inverter do I need yes. if I want this and this and this? How much solar do I need if I want this yes, and this and this? Because yes. I don't know what I'm going to want. Okay. So that's why I ended up with so much solar, and I have a 2,000 watt inverter. Okay, and you're and okay so with that. I have, you know, it's, it's way overkill. But it's for what simple. I ended up wanting. Yes. And, and you're running it with one battery. Yeah. One battery. Um, this is amazing. This is good. Because I am of the opinion that when I talk to people with solar, um, it's almost like you're talking rocket science and physics. Yeah. It but can it get really, really could be scary. simple. It could be very yeah. simple. Yeah. And I have heard and read that for most people's uses out there, and uh -huh. I'm talking off-grid and, yes. and the yes. boondocking thing, um, 
200. Um, amp hour, uh, uh, an array? 200 watts of okay. solar okay. will give you what you need. Now, that's not going to be your, you know, your TVs your, and, ooh, throw that little guy out uh, of here. A little uh, eh, a bee. Well, he's going to he, he wants in on the, on the <laughs> We have a bee He's right in front of the us. camera. He's saying hi to you guys. Hi. Okay. Oh, look at that. All right, we're just going to let him do <laughs> okay. his thing. So, yeah, you know, I think that anybody that had, um, you know, like I don't have the air conditioning and I don't have the real big draws on things. So a couple hundred watts was good. of solar and you're going to be fine for, you know, and you don't need a 2000 watt inverter either. Okay. The thing that inspires me is the one battery. Yeah. Because there's people that'll do the series parallel hours. with four batteries. Yeah. And uh, that's exciting. That's and good. again, that just depends on what you're, you know, uh, the, yeah. what you want to use and what you feel like you need to have in your life to be comfortable. Right. And so I you're charging have... phones. Yeah. Um, you run some lights at night. Yeah. And, you know, LED, they draw I'm watching nothing. That he's, he's just he's, checking he's, things he's, out. He's, he's admiring. Coming into, yeah. He's the, coming in to visit. Okay. He'll leave um, when you can't find anything fun. Yeah. Now, you had mentioned boondocking. Yes. How do you choose where to go, where to stay? Because that's another question that I think a lot of it's people have. It's a big have. question. And so, so much of that information is online, okay. on YouTube. You can look up, uh, you know, boondocking. Like freecampsites.net okay. um, is one of the ones that people use a lot. Uh, you meet people. Okay. And oh, you I, end up inside. traveling with them yes. and finding oh. these places. Um, and that's what happened to me when I when I left okay. uh, the first time, I didn't know anybody. I knew that I was going to go to a gathering. Okay. I was going to go to this gathering. <laughs> I was going to see what kind of people they were. Yeah. I was going to um, find out whether this worked for me or not. And so that's how I ended up meeting people and traveling with them and learning some of the ropes. Okay. And But so much of that is available online, you know, now, which is, which oh, is great. Cool. But Quartzsite, Arizona, of course, is a huge place where people go. Um, but Parker, Lake Havasu, all the Arizona is so full of public land. Okay. Okay. That the, and and it's got lots of elevation options. Okay. Which makes it easier to chase the weather. Okay. You okay, know. Good, good. So that's why Arizona is so big for boondocking and for travelers. So you kind of uh, learn the tricks of the trades, hanging out in mm -hmm. that area, just bumping into people. Mm -hmm. Um, you've made friends yes. along the way. Yes, and wonderful you, friends. And do you, do you put plans here, like, okay, meet me here at such and such a yes. time, and we'll hang out together? Oh, that's exciting. Yes. Friends we, you'd never had before no. that you found just doing this. Absolutely. And wow. when we all, you know, it, it's an ebb and flow. Yes. And people come and go, and they all have lives and different things to, to do. And, you know, it often breaks breaks up. You, you end up having little tribes, you know. Exactly. People yes. that you, yes. you always hang with. Yes. Um, and so when everybody kind of goes off at the end of the winter season, because mm -hmm. a lot of people travel back to you know home wherever mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. from for summer and stuff, and then you keep keep in touch all winter. When are you heading back out, and oh, where fun. are you going to meet? You know, okay. where should we meet up, or do you want to travel someplace new this year, or what? You know, so yeah, you end up making making friends and oh, having your own tribe. I, it sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. Now um, another question that I think a lot of people would have is, what do you do for income? How do you make that work when okay. you're on the road and you're traveling around? Uh, you got to eat, you got to pay bills, yeah. you got to pay. How does that fit into all of this? Well, and again, that's that's going to be a really wide, you know, spectrum of things that work for I, yeah, people. Yeah, I was an engineer, so I just went from uh, airport to airport, automating airport baggage systems and me and my RV. So that was oh, my job. Okay. So, okay, so you had a job. So yeah. I'm one of the lucky few in that I had enough money to do this and enough money to... Um, to I had sold property okay, okay and so I had some income coming from that because I carried the contracts and um, and and savings and things and good, I'm good. 60 you know 63 64 so, you so. Get discounts at the golden <laughs> pad <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and nice men like to do things for you yes oh that's good 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 <laughs> so um so I I have enough behind me that I can do this and I literally live on about and I know people live on less um about 1200 a month Amazing. Yeah. And, and it goes back to one thing you said where it's just simple. Yeah. It's super simple. And so you could either have all the trappings and all the exciting things in yeah. life, but then you have to pay for that or, or go simple and, and get your life back yeah. because the less freedom. is more. Yeah. You have freedom. Yeah. So you either have freedom 
or you have all the trappings of success and you're fancy this and you're fancy that yeah. and you're all this kind of stuff. So I guess, I guess I'll look, that might be the takeaway is, is which do you want? It's a seesaw. Yeah. And it's I want a... your life. It's just, <laughs> you're traveling around, you're making friends, you're living on one battery. Yeah. Right. One battery. <laughs> you know? I don't pay for electricity. You yes. know, once you have that investment, it's like, okay, now I'm living pr pretty free and easy. Oh, amazing. Yes. And, um, you know, I'm not going to pretend like there, there aren't, I don't want to call them hardships because they're not, sure. they're little inconveniences, you yes. know, you're subject to the weather all the time. You know, you don't have, um, the space that would be nice to lay out your art stuff and yes. your, your music stuff and the room for this and the room for that. And, um, and so, yeah, yeah. And the, and the unlimited supply of hot water, oh, you know, hot running yes. water. Yes. Yeah, you don't have those things. Um, and so sometimes, yeah, you kind of go, eh. Well, what do you do for laundry and stuff like that? You, you find stop laundry at laundromats. Okay, laundromats. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And what do you do for mail? I don't have much mail. So, you okay. know, online is okay. so yes. much. And I have very little of that going on in my life. But I um, use my daughter's address. Perfect. And, and then she'll just send me a snapshot of anything that seems like it might be important. Okay. You know, so I just don't get that much. So my insurance is paid online. Perfect. You know, all that kind of stuff. Internet makes a lot of things it does. possible. It does. How about health? Uh, health, ins um, not insurance, but like any, any, like if you need a doctor, uh, yeah. a lot of people are nervous about leaving their, their doctor how, yeah. and you're traveling around. How does that work for you? And that can be really scary for okay. some people. Um, I'm not much of a doctor person, okay. so it's okay. less scary to me. Because but... yeah, I don't have any stress. It's so so Yeah, cool. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm on the Washington health care, okay. you know, program, so I get that if I'm in Washington. Okay. If you're And out. I'm out of Washington about eight months out of the year. You're kind of self pay. So it's kind of like if something happens and it requires a doctor, it'll probably come out of my pocket. And I'm not, I think there's some things that might, okay. that Washington healthcare might take care of. I haven't looked into it because I'm, I feel um, young and healthy and invincible, which good. is stupid. But <laughs> You know, um, so, so far, so good, but I Excellent. haven't run into any major issues. I, I do do my dental okay, okay. work down in Mexico. Okay, okay. Which is wonderful. That's good. So, you know, that takes care of that. Well, good. Any, I, so we're, we're kind of winding down. Okay. Um, I could probably think of a thousand <laughs> other questions. And, and folks, if you have other questions, I think we could still reach out to you. Sure. Are you comfortable, if somebody wanted to communicate with you, are you comfortable giving your information so they can kind of reach out to you? I absolutely am. Okay, well, let, well, them, let yeah. them have it. So if you want to reach okay. out directly to Deborah, here's how you would do okay. that. Okay, so my, uh, probably the best way would be my email address, okay. uh, and that is Radar, which is my road name. R-A-D-A-R. R-A-D-A-R. Okay. Raiden, my last name, R-A-D-E-N, Okay. the number one at gmail.com. Okay. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or talk to somebody if they're, you know, thinking about this or... Excellent. This or, is great. This is a great resource. Yeah. Well, and it's really been fun when I meet some people, you know, and they're kind of like, well, I've never gone out. I've not. I say, here, let's exchange phone numbers. And when you're ready to hit the road, I'll tell you where to go or where I am. Oh, fantastic. You can come and meet me, you yes. know, that kind of thing. Because it's really, I think one of the really interesting things about this lifestyle is that you end up interacting with every walk of life. And there's no judgment calls on them, really. Yeah. You know, you sit around campfires, and there's people you would never have had conversation mm -hmm. with, given a different situation, and they're wonderful people. We need more of that. Yeah. So. We, we need to get back around the campfire. Yeah. Yeah, we really do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so maybe that's what the series will become. We'll just interview all kinds of people. Back around we'll the campfire. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll make your email on a link. We'll make the email a link down in the description so you can just click on it, make it easy. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. Sure. And uh, any fun little uh, uh, anecdotes on stories in the last five oh, years gosh. that you want to share? Stay away from the rattlesnakes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, gee, that's a good one. Yeah, Is you really do want to happen there? I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not like they're all over the place, but that weather warms up down in the southwest, and you do have to start. Have you had some close calls? Um, I have a friend who got bit. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Stepped out of her van at night, and it was a baby, and they're the worst oh, because they no. have no control over the amount of venom they they Tell um, me she's okay. Release. I actually don't know. I wasn't real good friends with her, but I camped with her in different situations, and I had heard that that happened. You know, they flew her out to a hospital. And oh my gosh. So I don't know. I'm hoping she's let's, okay. Let's just hope that but, yeah. she's okay. And then, um, you know, you do a lot of walking and hiking through the deserts and stuff like that. And so, yeah, we've had a couple times where it's like, 
all of a sudden you hear them and they're warning you and it's like you start jumping okay, in every you know, direction because oh you're not gosh. sure where to go yes. you know so carry yeah. a snake bite kit right little yellow yeah, box things probably yeah. be a good idea but um there's just some amazing things to see out there you know if you're uh if you're a sightseer and yeah. there's places to go and things to do but uh, for me it's been more about um finding comfortable weather mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and finding fun people to just hang with now you mentioned Arizona. Have you gone out to the east? Have you traveled? I have not, but my, I do have a girlfriend that I travel with, um, and we've been talking about that this year. Okay, and good. for the five years I've done it, I've gone out for the winter, and then I've come up back into my home area and, okay. you know, visited friends and family, done some house sits and that okay, kind of thing. Okay, okay. Um, so that I can be up here in the northwest in the summer because it's so beautiful our, up here. Yeah, our winter, our um, summers are phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> best, I've been to every state right? and this is the best summer it's ever. <laughs> so good. But there That's are cool. places that I would like to go to in the summer. Okay. And so I may, may stay out this next year and kind of do some more traveling and heading towards the east perhaps okay. and doing some of that. But it gets tricky as you move east because okay. there's way less if any um public land interesting okay mm -hmm. okay and campgrounds are booked and filled and expensive okay and okay. so i've met people from the east coast you know uh, and they go oh no just stay on the west coast wow okay so that's a good tip so yeah wow. um but you know just be fun to go someplace in the sure. east. so we'll yeah. see we'll see what happens the but... blue ridge parkway is real pretty yeah, yeah. and yeah. Um, so that whole part the appalachian is just beautiful but right I think like you said it's not a lot of public land to just kind of mm -hmm. go explore it's fun to drive through and maybe find but right you know stay in a hotel or do something else yeah, for, yeah, for, yeah. for that kind of a trip but do you ever stay in a hotel just to take a long hot bath or a long hot shower just to kind of well I'll tell you there's uh, initially I think my first three years I never stayed anywhere I, I mean I didn't pay a dime to live anywhere see that's awesome in the last two years or so um I found a couple of places like uh, like RV resorts. Okay, yeah. And so a bunch of us would maybe go there for two weeks or for a month. And I had found one in um, southeastern California that had you know tennis and mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. and fun, and dancing and fun people. So we go and stay for a month and and enjoy those activities. And of course, oh, then you've got the showers and the pools and the hot tubs and the tennis and the pickleball. And you know you go do something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, you treat yeah. yourself for a month. But in general, and I've been lucky too. I mean, I've met a lot of friends on the road that actually have homes. Oh, fun. And okay. so sometimes they'll go, oh, just go and stay in the Lake Havasu house for a month, you know, <laughs> or something, you know, and I'm like, really? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, or come to Colorado and stay, you know. Oh, so, fun, I mean, fun. so I get in, <clears throat> in with the house sitting that I did, you know, I'll just do that a few times during the year. Um, you know, kind of get you off the road for a little while yeah. and you get the comfort. And you're not going to meet people like that unless you're out there. Right. Right. Yeah, because they want to get to know you yeah. around the campfire again. Yeah. You know. And every time I start thinking, oh, you know, maybe I want a little place. Um, there's two things that happen. First of all, the economy is, you know, just, you can't buy a little house anymore. Yeah, those you days know? are, yeah. They're gone. Yeah, yeah. And so that's a limitation. And then the idea of committing to oh, something wow. anymore, I've lost that sort of you're sense. You're free now. Yeah. And now you're going to yeah, tether give, yourself back somewhere. Giving that up sort of kind of freaks me out a little bit. And then that whole thing, you know, like when you're out on the road, it's like you don't like the view, you move. You don't exactly. like the neighbors, you move. You Dogs got a barking, barking. dog, yeah, you yes, move, right? Yes, right. That's and been our experience. So yes. there's that kind of sense of independence and freedom that is hard once you've tasted it to mm -hmm, sort of let mm -hmm. go of it. And Wonderful. it's at my age, you know. I mean, there's yeah. young people that they want to go back and they have a want a career and they want to work and and mm -hmm. things like that. It's different, but for people of my age bracket, I think um, more and more of us are going, yeah, yeah, this is great. And there's very wealthy people out there that are boondocking, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, just hanging out, just doing it the simple way because like, they can and they want I to. I love this. So. What do you do for food? What's your favorite foods and things? Do you prepare meals here? Pretty basic eater, always have been. So yeah, okay. I was cooking here. I use a, just a single burner butane camp stove. Okay, perfect. I pull it out, sit it on my counter, um, you're, you're... you know, s scramble eggs, make okay. potatoes, make tacos, oh, you know, fun. fry okay. a steak now and then, whatever. Just pretty simple pretty simple food good, good. yeah Excellent. and then that's a 50 quart freezer sitting on the, the freezer here yep Fri okay. refrigerator um and run so, off your one battery off a of solar well, yep i yep. love that one battery thing yep oh well, i got six batteries i just like <laughs> she's got one and she's been doing for years one that i don't have to do anything to i love so, that yeah yeah so that works good that yeah. is so cool well do you you want to i'm going to give you this camera here okay so the camera that has been filming 
you. I'm going to hand that to you. And then we'll just walk around. You can show people some of the things you've done, tell some stories about how you made this cut and why you chose these lights. Okay. And then I'll, you or me can climb up on the top and show you some solar. Okay. Okay. So here All we right. go, folks. I'm going to hand this camera over to Deborah. Okay. So it's still recording. There you okay. go. All right. And is it facing me or away? Uh, you'll turn it around. I want to turn it around. Yep. So now and I can see what's Darren. happening. Okay. Yes. And um, I'll manage your wiring because we're all lavaliered up. Ah, okay. And so just pan around okay. and tell people. Let me so, move out of the way. One of the nice things about the ProMaster is it has this upper storage unit, which is great for just miss. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, miscellaneous junk. Um, when I started out, I had nothing up here, like no uh, storage, because I wasn't capable of making you know, shelving. Mm -hmm. And so I was out on the road and I it occurred to me that I could hang baskets and that has served me very well. And because of the angle and the weight, they don't bounce or anything. See, that's good. So yeah. Those are so excellent tips. That's, that, that's uh, so much. That's out really well for me. Now here's my bed and underneath my bed is this kind of stuff. So this is where I put, let's see if I can make this happen. And I can hold that open. Oh, you got the little bungee straps to hold stuff in. Yeah. So those, oh, that's where I put all of my clothes, other than my uh, coats and hats. Um, and then this was just a little cabinet that I purchased, you know, at a restore and painted it and screwed it to the floor. And then put, we'll move this over this way so that's not in the way. Uh, this is my water. So I get the OAs, you know, especially down in the Southwest, they've got water stations all over the oh, place. Fine. So it's okay. that reverse osmosis water. It tastes great. And this is what I use for my drinking water. Um, so this, again, I, I had to do everything as simply as I could because I couldn't build furniture. So I had purchased this little kitchen cabinet unit on Craigslist, took off the wheels and screwed it to the floor. Brilliant. And put on my own little um, handles because they were sort of northwesty wooden handles. <laughs> Very neat. Um, it did not have a little sink in it for my first, oh gosh, year and a half or two years. And then I did have this little salad bowl sink, um, you know, drilled a hole into that thing and and put put it together so I had a little sink. And it's not much, but it, it's helpful and it works. And then that just drains down into a container a down here. Yeah, yeah, that black okay. thing with the blue handle. Pull that out to dump. Yep, we pull that out to dump. And a little tip on that kind of thing, if you do it, is to paint it so you don't have to look at it. Because, you know, <laughs> it can get a little grungy. Yes. Um, but leave a strip along so it. You'll can see. see how full. Yeah, exactly. Oh, brilliant. So, okay. so I won't show yes. that again. Brilliant. Um, okay. okay, and so then this is my six gallon water container with a Foot, foot pump. pump, so you don't even need a water pump. I don't pump. even have it electrified. Brilliant. No. Brilliant. And that works great, and it just goes up into this little, you know, kitchen kitchen faucet handler. So simple. I love this. Yeah. So inspiring. So, um, and then, of course, the women folk love my little hanging basket that holds my earrings. No, I see a guitar. Are you a musician? I have a guitar. I, I'm a wannabe musician. Oh, fun. Okay. So I drag that around, and that keeps me busy and challenged. And then there's the A and R A R B refrigerator. Darren's seat. Yeah. Yes, it was very comfortable. Yeah, and I just wrapped it because I had extra insulation, and keeps me from kicking it and such. So you end up finding just lots of little ways to store things. Uh, one of my most recent things was finding a way to store my um, flip-flops. Oh, brilliant. And things. So I found yes. this little thing at the it's like a you know, pot holder thing Goodwill store and yes. screwed it onto there. And then, of course, you know, the buddy heater, which mm -hmm. keeps you warm in the to take the snap in out. The winter. You want to do any yeah. outside shots? Yeah, let's do and that. We'll, I'll climb up on the roof. Okay. I don't mind doing that. That sounds great. I, um, one of the things I might mention, too, is I'll show you was... Um, the window screens and I made these and they just pull off so they're magnet they're magnetic okay and they can just pull on and off I can do this and but, then I can film you showing people okay so the reason I made these is because it's no CM netting which you can get on uh, Amazon uh -huh. and then 
that way in the north or in the southwest, um, you can keep your windows down as far as you want, and still, you know, what you want. You want that airflow coming through your yes. through your van. So um, it's nice to find something or make something that you can, and I can leave it up when I drive, so they just and you stay can up. Still see. Oops. Oh, I see how it stays up. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just being silly. They, uh, <laughs> yeah. So. So yeah, 24 seven, they just stay on. Nice. And you can see through them very well. Oh, so. brilliant. So they're great. Now I know, to, and we'll go to the other side, you have the okay. nice uh, decal. Oh yeah, actually. Here, it's on this side? It's on both sides, but. Okay, that side's got the sun on it. Okay. Let me come around this All way. All right. Well, get, get, uh, yeah, it might be a little tricky Yeah, there. we're not gonna be able to get in there. But, uh, so we could we could show it on this side. This side's okay. got the sun, but you've got the, uh, rrr, I'm reaching Can way Can you do over. it? Um, we'll go. Open? We'll go from the other side. Okay, let's see what happens. So there's there's your your um, logo, or what would you call that? Right. Your so that's that's a word, caudy wampler. It's an old English term. It means a person who travels in a purposeful manner towards a vague destination. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So my nephew does commercial graphics. So we designed it and put it up. And he gave me a bunch of butterflies so I can <laughs> put them up whenever I feel like yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And then we've got the solar. So I'll climb up on the ladder on the back. Okay. And we'll just take a look at that. Okay. And I see you've even got it on your license plate. I do. We'll, here, hang on to that real <laughs> okay. quick. All right. So I'm going to climb up here. Okay, so here we have the two solar panels on the roof. Yes, and that the main rack was already on this van, and then my son made the other racks that the solar is attached to. Okay. What is in this tube here? So that is a water tube um, that holds about six gallons of water, and I put it up there as a way to perhaps have this outdoor shower kind of situation. Oh, fun. Okay. And it only works really well if the weather's perfect. Okay, so I see here. Let me come down, folks, and show you this. So you have, it looks like an air chuck yeah, here. Yeah, I've got a, you know, a bubble. You, you pressurize the pressurizer, okay. and I can hook a hose to that. And then you have this. Yeah. So I haven't found it to be as useful as I thought it might be. Okay. To, to make it simple, unless you're in really good weather, and then the water warms up enough. Well, good. To make it work, so. Well, fun. This has been an amazing interview. I'm inspired. I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that we've really helped a lot of people maybe overcome some of their fears, some of their questions. And we're going to make a link where you can reach directly out yes. to Deborah here. Feel free to do that. So, yeah. So thanks yeah. for your time. Oh, you're very yes, welcome. This is, this is such yeah. a blessing to be able to do this with you. And um, so happy campers say my every works. And it sounds like you are the epitome of the happy campers out there. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you. So say goodbye. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. See you guys.